everyone, my name is Christy. Welcome to my computer screen. I just wanted to film a quick video going through the steps of how I create a temperature slash color table for a temperature pattern and how you can do it too. I often get questions in both my YouTube channel and also on my Etsy shop about how to take the temperature table that I provided, which is specifically for my town in Mississippi in the United States and in Fahrenheit, and convert that into a temperature table for someone who maybe lives in a more in a colder area or for Celsius. So I decided to make this video just to help people get a more accurate and interesting temperature variation on their temperature chart. I hope that this is helpful. If you have watched this video and have decided that you just don't want the hassle of creating your own temperature table, I did just post a listing on my Etsy site, which I will link down below, to get me to make it for you. I'm willing to do that um, for a fee. It does actually take quite a lot of time to do, but it is, uh, I have created that service as an available option. I've also linked to my Etsy shop in general and also to the weather website that I use to come up with historical temperatures. This will not be a complete, I will show you how to create the temperature table. This is just going through the steps of how I do that. First things first, I go to this website, which is Weather Underground, and it's wunderground.com. Like I said, I'll link it down below. And I choose where I want to go. So in this case, I have chosen Caribou, Maine. And the reason I chose Caribou, Maine is because it was a northern place I've been to. I mean, that's essentially, I'm like, I'm gonna just choose a random, a random place. I chose Caribou, Maine, and this is just the weather for Caribou, Maine at the moment. But what you wanna do is go to history right here, click on that, and that will allow you to choose the past high temperatures that you want to look at. And I click on monthly, and what you will get is a essentially line chart of the temperatures for the month. So this is, we're halfway through October. This is the temperatures in October up to that point. And what I look at are these, the I, I do high temperatures. And so I look at the highest temperatures for the day. So for example, on the 13th, the high temperature was 77 on the first it was 49 degrees and I for my for myself and for my Etsy listing will look at the past five years so in this in the case of I'm filming this in 2021 I will look at 2016 through 2020 and find kind of a the lowest high temperature in those five years and the highest high temperature in those five years and go from there. In this case, I'm just gonna show you one year. I'm gonna show you 2020 and how to find those temperatures. I don't look at every high temperature. I don't look at every month, but I will go to 2020. And so first let's talk about the highest low temperature of the year. And that for North America is usually January. So I always start with January. So here I clicked on January 2020 and you click view and it takes a second to load up. So just give it a moment. And what you see here is that the lowest high temperature in January was on January 18th, 2020. And the lowest high temperature in that month was six degrees. So once I find this, I jot down that the I jot this down as the lowest high temperature in January of 2020. Now, it's not always in January, so I do look at February and December just to make sure, but it's almost, at least in, in North America, it's in January. So let's look at February just to make sure. And here we have, oh, see, in February, Friday the 14th was four degrees. Finally, just to really make sure I'm doing what needs to be done, I go to December. But in general, December is actually warmer than you think it is, which surprised me. Yeah, so our lowest high temperature in December was nine degrees in 2020 in Caribou. One thing to keep in mind is that when we think about historic temperatures, we think about the extremes. We think about the lowest lows and the highest highs. So you would assume that in super northern Maine, you would have tons of time in the negative degrees because 
we think of the low is in the negative. So if we go back to January, well, let's go to February of 2020 because that had the lowest high temperature of the year. The lowest low temperature of the year was negative 32. And so people remember the negative 32 because that is really, really cold. But the high temperature that day was 17 degrees Fahrenheit. So as you're going through this, just remember that you're looking at the lowest high temperature and the highest high temperature. And I also want to point out that you want to think about other, you kind of, because you're getting a range, so we're going back to January here, because there were a lot of fairly low temperatures here. This is, so this is six degrees, but there's no other high temperature that's below 10 degrees in January of 2020. And if we go to February, we have this really low four degrees, but again, no other high temperature is below 10 degrees. So you wanna keep that in mind as you're creating a range because your lowest color will be a like below zero or below 10, that kind of a thing. So in this case, I would probably make my lowest range below 10 degrees, which I think would probably surprise people who live in Caribou, Maine, because Caribou, Maine gets really, really cold. The low temperatures in Caribou, Maine are very low, but we're not worried about low temperatures. We're worried about high temperatures. So now we need to go to the high temperatures, and in North America, the high temperatures are usually the highest in July, August, and September. So I start there. So July of 2020 in Caribou, Maine, our high, high temperature is here, 88 degrees. And in August, our high temperature is 90 degrees. And in September, it's 81 degrees. We're not going to bother with that. But let's just check out June just to make sure that we have the highest high. In Maine, in 2020, June 19th, had the highest high, which was 95 degrees. But again, if you look at the rest of the highs around this, so we have 94 and 85 right here. This one is 90. There aren't actually very many temperatures that are above 90 degrees. I mean, there's no nine, above 90 degrees in July. And in August, there's only one. So you, so for your, highest high temperature, although you have a 94 and a 95, you probably would want your highest temperature to be 91, like above 90, right? 91 and above or 90 and above. And that would give you kind of a lot of wiggle room. Once you have your lowest low and highest high temperatures for the year or however many years you want to look at, I then will open up an, a spreadsheet or I'll have a Word document out and create a table, and I will put in, you know, colors, temperature range. And I will zoom in on this just so you can see what I'm doing here. So here we have colors and temperature range, and I'm not going to put in the colors. I just want to talk about the temperature range, but let's say we have, you know, one through 20. So imagine, like I said, that we have 20 colors. So we'll just go down to here. Okay, one through 20. We've decided that because our lowest high temperature for all of 2020 was four degrees Fahrenheit and very few other temperatures were below 10 degrees, that below 10 would be a good place to start. And then you go down to the bottom, and because our highest high temperature for 2020 in Caribou, Maine is 95 degrees, but there were very few other temperatures above 90 degrees that we would do above 90. So now we have our below, our lowest, and our highest. What I like to do is start here, 11 to 14, 
15 to 18, 19 to 22, I think, 19, 20, 21, 22, yep, 23 to 26, Okay, so I have all them in, and as you see, we have about an eight degree difference between this 82 degrees and this above 90 degrees. So your options at this point are either to go back and redo all your colors to make it five degrees, which I don't recommend. I don't recommend having ranges larger than four degrees. Or you can add in two or three more colors that will help you just kind of expand this and you can kind of mix it up in that way. An easy way to do that is to add a cooler feeling color below this first color or find out where, kind of look at your color rainbow and see where your gaps are. I'm going to shrink this so you can see the whole thing or at least most of it. So this is how I come up with a temperature chart or a temperature table for different temperatures. And you can do this for any place that shows up in the history of this website, which again is Weather Underground. It's wunderground.com. And you click on history, find where you are, and go through the monthly, monthly views. Like I said, when I do this for my Etsy shop, I do it for five years. But you don't have to do that. I just like to be absolutely sure that I'm giving folks a good range that is accurate to their place and not just like a fluke if there was a fluky kind of hot year or something like that. Um, it just kind of makes me feel better in that way. So I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm happy to answer them. You can post them in the comments down below this video or you can, you know, contact me on Instagram or on Etsy and I'm happy to help out in any way that I can. And I will also post a link to the W Underground website where I get all my historical weather temperatures. So thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. Please take care of yourselves and have a good one. Bye. Okay.